So in the last video, we, we started talking about two-level systems. And we were trying to use the Schrodinger equation, uh, so the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, to analyze this system with two different energies, E1 and E2, when we're applying some light to it of some frequency and some electric field. And we also said that this state too has some wave function psi two, which is a function of space and time. And this uh, energy down here has some wave function that it corresponds to psi one of X and T. And using uh, everything that we know about psi one and psi two and the Hamiltonian and all that stuff, uh, we managed to uh, come up with a differential equation in terms of C1 and C2 that looks something like this. Uh, we've got IH bar DC1 DT, and I'm going to put the time dependence back in here because I don't have such a horrible, horrible equation anymore. Uh, e to the minus I omega 1 T times psi 1, which is just a function of X, uh, plus the same exact thing for C2 uh, C2 of T dt e to the minus i omega 2t times psi 2, which is a function of x. And this was all equal to 0. And yeah, actually, this is sort of still a horrible equation, but we, we'll, we'll deal with that. So what we'd really like is an equation just in terms of C1 and just in terms of C2. And right now we've got one equation that's in terms of both C1 and C2. So it seems like we're stuck. Uh, it seems like we can't do anything. And indeed, I stared at this for a while, not knowing any, uh, not having any idea what to do. Um, but what we can do is we can use what we've used in previous videos about inner products uh, and about orthogonality uh, to make this equation, to split this equation up into two separate equations. Um, and so all we need to do uh, is we need to know that psi 1 and psi 2, these two functions are orthogonal. And so any, uh, so if we take their inner product, psi 1, psi 2, uh, or equivalently, we integrate them uh, from minus infinity to infinity, psi 1 conjugate times psi 2, we should get zero because they are orthogonal and if psi 1 and psi 2 so if psi 1 and psi 2 are properly normalized uh, which we we hope they would be because that we're using them in the Schrodinger equation um, then we know that uh, the inner product of psi 1 with itself so psi 1 comma psi 1 uh, is equal to 1 and you can also get that from the integral so the integral of psi 1 conjugate times psi 1, this is just the integral of the magnitude squared of psi 1 uh, over all space, which we interpret as integrating the probability distribution. So probability is a function of x. And if you integrate the probability distribution, you should get 1. Uh, so if, if psi is indeed, or psi squared is indeed a probability distribution, you should get 1. And similarly, uh, psi 2 and psi 2, uh, the, their inner product should also be 1. And so we can use these facts uh, and take the inner product of this entire function up here. Uh, so let's call this whole function f. Uh, so first we can take the inner product with respect to psi 1, uh, so psi 1, and then we can take the inner product with respect to psi 2, and we'll have two different equations. So I suggest you do that now uh, and try to take the inner product yourself uh, and see what you get. Now, if you do that, uh, you should get a couple of things. Uh, so let's, let's break this up term by term. So let's first take the inner product of psi 1 with this, uh, this term and then psi 1 with this term. So if we take the inner product of psi 1, uh, so psi 1 with our left-hand side, uh, that's what ih bar dc1 dt e to the minus i omega 1t times psi 1. And then we need to add this to the inner product of the right-hand term. So uh, psi 1 with, uh, with the right-hand term, which is just in terms of c2. So ih bar dc2 dt e to the minus i omega 2t 
psi 2. And so the cool thing is that all these terms, these are just constants and functions of time. And so we can pull them out of this inner product or equivalently pull them out of the integral. Uh, and we've just got ih bar dc1, not, not c2, c1, uh, dc1 dt e to the minus i omega 1 t uh, times the inner product of psi 1 with psi 1 which we just said was equal to 1. So that's great. We can just, we can just erase that. Um, and similarly, on the right-hand side, uh, and this is all equal to 0, uh, so for our writing out our full equation. On the right-hand side, we can pull out all of these terms, and we'll end up with this times the inner product of psi 1 with psi 2, which we just said was equal to 0. So this whole term on the, uh, on the right-hand side goes away, and we've got our final differential equation in terms of C1. But if we divide everything by IH bar and multiply by e to the I omega t, we'll, really, we'll see something really interesting, uh, which is that the derivative of C1 with respect to time is zero. And you can get the, you'll get the same exact thing if you uh, take the inner product with respect to psi2, that dc2 dt is equal to zero. And so C1, and C2 do not change with time. Uh, so they do not change with time. And so this was assuming that we didn't apply any electric field or any, any photons, which basically means if we've initially got an electron uh, in state one, so it's initially got energy one, and we don't apply an electric field, so we don't apply any sort of perturbation, uh, C1 is initially equal to 1, it will stay in this state forever, uh, according to this Schrodinger equation, because C1 and C2 are not functions of t. And I also should just mention that um, the probability that it's in state 1 uh, is just the magnitude of C1 squared. Similarly, the probability that it's in C2 is just magnitude of C2 squared. And you can get that from the Schrodinger equation. Uh, but I thought I, I would just point it out here to make sure. And so now in the next couple of videos, we're finally ready. We've got some practice taking inner products. Uh, we, we know what to, what to look for. We know that psi1 and psi2 are orthogonal. And so now we're ready to add back in the light. So it's some, uh, at some frequency or equivalently with some electric field. And we're, to do that, we're going to use what's called perturbation theory. Uh, perturbation theory. And it sounds fancy and scary. Uh, it's not so fancy and scary compared to the stuff you've already been doing. Um, so I'll, I'll go through it in the next video and, uh, and we'll go through what happens when you apply some light. And we expect these coefficients to now change with time. So their derivatives shouldn't just be equal to zero, but they should be some function of time. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like below and consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just post them down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.